All right. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Yuriko. Um, I work at a company called Crypto Economics Lab, building an LT application framework called Plasma Chamber. So today, I'll be giving the latest research update of layer two technology and introducing our framework. So before we start, I just want to give a quick, I just want to take a quick um, audience poll. So how many of you guys have heard um, OVM, Optimistic Virtual Machine? OK. And <laughs> how many of you guys have heard Crypto Economics Lab or Plasma Chamber? OK. Thank you so much. So today, um, the, the goal of my talk today is I want everyone in this room to know what exactly it's like to build an application using a framework on top of layer two and OVM. So here we go. Um, so in this presentation, I'm going to first talk about why L2 application abstraction matters to us and introduce some of the POC works that we have been conducting with our clients. And then going over some of the basics of the Plasma and OVM, I'm going to um, demonstrate um, a showcase apps that we built with our framework so that you, get, you can get a clear view of what kind of application you can build with Plasma Chamber from the video. And then I'm going to cover some of the challenges that we've faced during our framework development and introduce quickly like next major milestone for us. So before we start, I just want to give a little bit of background of who we are, where we came from. So Crypto Economics Lab has six people in total, and its R&D team consists of three people on the top row, including myself. And uh, the other three on the second row are in the adoption team, and they're in charge of running, uh, running POC projects with other clients, putting our R&D efforts and outcomes into the practice with real use cases of Plasma. So how exactly Crypto Economics Lab has started and why we focus on the generalization of the L2 application. So ever since the company was founded, Plasma has been our research focus, but we have this major breakthrough when this blog post was released. It was written by Kelvin Fitcher. Um, he is a former Plasma researcher at Plasma Group, and this, he wrote this article last summer. And when we were researching different kinds of um, Plasma flavors back then, it took us like a whole month to convince ourselves why exactly EVM Plasma was not really feasible. And after reading this post, we thought that exit games should be really, really application specific. So, so we concluded that uh, we concluded that there should be a programming language that can that can define an application specific um, exit games instead. And because our chief scientist Shuhei's specialty was um, defining programming language, designing programming language to define a set of problems that it can handle, we decided our research focus on exploring a succinct way to express different kinds of generalized applications on top of Plasma without sacrificing security. <coughs> then we chose Plasma Cache, um, which um, prioritizes security over expressiveness of the application and started implementing it, adding our own unique features. And Thanks to Shuhei's huge effort, um, the implementation went pretty fast. We titled it Plasma Chamber and introduced it at Edgon this May. And in that presentation, we played a demo video of a payment app as our first prototype of our framework, on our framework. And then at the same time, we have been running POC projects with our clients again. And for example, we have been developing this peer-to-peer -peer token trading system of home-generated electricity with tube electric power. And also, we have been researching um, with IoT platform company to explore um, real use cases of Plasma. And I just want to stress here that we are very grateful to have them as our client 
because without them, we wouldn't have been able to create real-world use case of Plasma and run a sustainable R&D at the same time as a startup. So, yeah, huge thank you to them. And, but, yeah, here, June. Um, however, it was sometimes tough to run POC projects and R&D at the same time because when, <coughs> when the project gets back and forth as the basic design gets updated in the research, um, our hope to get the framework development done as soon as possible and run the POC project entirely upon <coughs> based upon our framework got stronger and stronger. So here, June, we stopped, took time, and started thinking over the core values that we want to create in our framework once again. So here are the exact conclusions that we've got. <coughs> First, you can build applications very easily. So developers, application developers will be able to build their application with L2 specific features, such as instant payment and gasless transactions, very easily without hassle. So they can cut the repetitive development for those features, and every, um, every blockchain application developers will be able to build applications, for example, from um, blockchain beginners to skilled software engineers will be able to build them in the same manner. And the second thing is you can build applications very securely. So, um, now, uh, expression of all fraud proof verification is standardized with a shared universal notation. So before discussing exit games specifically designed for an application uh, was very challenging and time consuming. Now with our framework, it's much easier and check, it's, it's much easier to check and strengthen the security of the application from two aspects. First is you will write simply less code on your own, so you can reduce potential bugs. And also the second thing is now the claims designed for an applications are interpreted, interpreted in the same way, in both in smart contracts and clients, so there's going to be a fewer potential bugs. The third value that we want to create in our framework is you can build applications flexibly. So, um, so um, application uh, developers will be able to build their application with this decomposable building blocks. So, this decomposition and uh, and then they can reuse them for different constructions. This decomposition and reconstruction plays a massive role in the, in the abstraction of layer two. For example, <coughs> plasma and state channel can be essentially built with the same, exact same building blocks. But impossible combination of the, all the different building blocks will be automatically de detected by compiler, so you will be able to know that it doesn't work as an application beforehand. <clears throat> then we discussed that to create these three values, we definitely need a shared universal language. So there is a saying that math did not evolve pretty fast until some early year because there was no universal way to note it, all different kinds of basic math equations that we are now very familiar with. Similarly, if you're familiar with all the discussions and proposals made on ETH research, you probably know that um, you, every time making a post, you have to write so much definitions at first. And at one point, so at one point, we started wondering, maybe it's better to create some universal way to know that all different kinds of plasma predicates, so following the, following the same format. And we can, so that we can create, uh, we can create more efficient communication with researchers and provide them with a logical way to prove security rather than using natural language. And if you want to know more detail, we described it in our 
plasma predicate research repo. So please take a look. Then Plasma Group proposed the OBM. It's a shared language for layer two. And as soon as it was released, we decided to go for it because it was exactly what we wanted. So putting it to a simple word, um, OBM describes that all different kinds of fraud proofs on layer two can be compared to a judicial system. So there is a strongest low there is uh, the strongest low sitting on the Ethereum, which is called adjudication contract. And the point here is whether it's plasma, state channel, or optimistic rollup, all the claims submitted from layer two to the adjudication contracts are following the same format. And adjudication contract decides whether the claim is true or not. So how can you exactly claim some fact is correct to the adjudication contract? You, here, you use first order logic. It's a proposition that contains sentences with quantifiable variables. So if you want to claim that Taro is a man, then you can follow this format saying that there exists x such that x is Taro and x is a man, where there exists this phrase works as a, a quantifier, and x is a variable. And OVM, again, a shared language for layer two, employ the standardized notation to express the, these properties. So let's take a look at some of the examples of the uh, quantifiers. So first is universal quantifier. If you want to claim, um, uh, different kinds of things are having the uh, having a feature having the same feature in all in common. You want to use quantifier. So here, this is basically saying that every cat is cute. So, and following the format, you can claim this st um, statement for all x such that x is a cat, then x is cute. And if you want to claim, uh, if you want to decide this claim to be true, then you can, you have to pass a dispute period without getting any challenge. Maybe, for example, like a single picture of ugly cat. And if you want to claim there ex exists um, a cat that can fly or that can that has wings, then you want to use existential quantifier. So following the format first order logic format, you can say this, there exists x such that x is a cat and x has wings. And if you want to make this, if you want to decide this claim to be true, then you just have to simply turn in a single picture of a cat that has wings and flying. So following these basic notation, universal way of notation, you can even make properties for plasma, which is relatively complex compared to other O2 constructions. So before deep diving into all these different kinds of properties for plasma, I just wanna, I just wanna explain um, how plasma cache works in general. So there are two users who want to make payments to each other, then they have to deposit their funds to plasma chain and send messages to each other on the plasma chain then when the transactions are sent, um, aggregator has to verify the transaction and collects them, make a Marco root, and publish a Marco hash, hash root of the Marco tree. It's like a summary of all the transaction to the main chain, and it, get, it gets stored on the main chain. Then those users who interacted with each other can finally withdraw their funds to the main chain from Plasma Chain. So to enable, to allow this whole process, you need three different kinds of properties. Checkpoint property, exit property, and ownership property. So first checkpoint property is to claim the validity of the coin history. So it basically says all state updates within a certain coin range in every, every single block before the current block gets is um, deprecated. So in order to specify a, 
um, certain coin range, you use universal quantifier, this one uh, on the left, two times in the claim in the following the first order logic. So the universal quantifier is represented with this um, upside down like A mark. And the next thing is exit property. Exit property is to claim that the coin has never been used. So uh, with this not predicate in the first order logic. So it's a state updates including block B and also it has never been deprecated, yes. And then um, in order to uh, create this whole process, the last thing that you need as a property is ownership property. It, it is to validate the ownership of the coin. So it says the um, transaction has been signed by this account, Alice. And if you want to require multi-signature here, then you can simply switch this ownership property to multi-sig property. And this is the key point of whole this presentation. So allowing this, allowing to switch this ownership property to multi-sig property plays a huge role in the abstraction of the application design because it gives a possibility, it gives a flexibility of the applications of the layer two. So, in order to, in order to um, enable this universal way of notation, we newly implemented plasma chamber after Edgon based on the OVM again. And now, application developers will be able to focus on designing application logic and front-end development because they don't have, they can cut the work redundancy and there's gonna be less repetitive implementation for client. Also, there's another thing good, another good thing for Plasma Chamber. Uh, now the combination of different kinds of L2 solutions are possible based on the OVM. So for example, Channel on Plasma or Dexon Plasma are, are, are possible. So what can you actually build with Plasma Chamber? So, I brought this demo video here today. So these are um, two applications, two clients, application clients, uh, and he is trying to send five die from the right wallet and the left wallet. Yeah, and then he's trying to paste the uh, uh, address of the left wallet here. And uh, the terminal is aggregator. So when he sends a transaction, the aggregator um, has to verify the transaction and make a plasma, new plasma block and submit it um, to the main chain when he's sending a transaction. Then it gets completed. So now, um, yes, uh, terminal, moved and <laughs> aggregator made a new transaction. Um, then the wallet on the left has five die sent from the wallet on the right side. And this, was a, this, was a, this is a payment app as our first showcase application. Then the next showcase application is um, atomics, offline atomic swap application which can be used for DEX. And this is, uh, he is trying to s exchange one ETH to 10 DAI. So he's um, creating a exchange offer and now it's kind of uploaded and you can check it, check that the offer is uploaded from the wallet on the right side. So he checked that there is an offer, and then he confirms it. Then he said, okay, then it's completed. Yeah, because again, aggregator uh, verified the transaction and uh, included it in a Merkle tree and created a plasma blo block, submitted to the main chain. So now the exchange is completed. 
So this was the, our example applications that we built on top of Plasma Chamber. So in order to create these kind of applications, obviously we had to develop framework itself. And what we did was we um, implemented Plasma client in Rust, including OVM runtime and aggregator client that was showed on the terminal on the left side, and the user clients, two clients on the right side. And also we have written some of the um, oh, the universal adjudication contract that I just explained previously in the slide, and Solidity, and also the basic predicates that can combine all these kind of prop, um, predicates. So I'm going to jump into some of the challenges that we've faced during our framework development. Um, so um, this slide is just um, to share our protocol development. <coughs> if somebody is interested in <laughs> the protocol development here. Um, so the most challenging part of our framework was OVM runtime design. Because runtime design defines the constraints of the applications and what kind of applications can be built on top of framework, we had to design um, runtime and think about the application abstraction at the same time. And challenging but interesting at the same time. Uh, one thing that was challenging um, yet interesting at the same time was defining primitive building blocks for properties. For example, we need atomic proposition predicate such as signed by predicate uh, or um, also a logical operation predicate, such as and predicate. Signed by predicates was explained in previously in the pro, um, all the um, properties that can make plasma, but it's, um, it's a predicate to check if the transaction is signed by a certain address. And and predicate is kind of a connecting tissue of predicates it can combine two different kinds of predicates. And we had to define these primitive properties as smaller as possible so that we can build arbitrarily complex um, applications, uh, I mean properties. And the second thing is property serialization. It was difficult. Um, especially, it was difficult to enable, um, enable smart contract, be able to uh, handle um, handle properties that has dynamic variables inside. Because decisions have to be decided both in smart contracts and client, um, we had we had to um, we had to have um, properties we had to have um, properties d no we had to have properties serializable and. Designing this, um, um, yeah, and the second, the third thing, the third thing that was um, challenging was implementing light client and Rust for multi platforms. So it was difficult to build um, uh, build light clients in Rust and compile it to multiple platforms such as Android or Linux or Mac OS, that was our original plan. That was very difficult. Um, for example, um, especially Android, uh, the multi-threaded programming using JNI was very tough. So um, considering all these accomplish accomplishments and challenges that we've faced, um, these are next uh, our expected de deliverables. So we want to create wallet for developers and developer portal on browser, and also more of the sample application on browser by the end of this year. So stay tuned. And <laughs> yes, so to wrap up, wrap up this talk, these are some of the um, resources, learning resources online. So there's an introductory um, blog post 
posted by Plasma Group. This is going to be definitely helpful to start learning about OVM and layer two in general. So please go check it out. And also we have OVM standard repo uh, to discuss the specs of the OVM. And also we have our own Medium page to let everybody know our um, latest research updates and the blog posts. Also we have um, this Rust OVM implementation in our GitHub, so please check them out. Okay, so thank you everyone. Um, if you have any questions, please tweet us, chat with us on our Telegram group chat, um, or um, Takamichi and I, uh, and from <laughs> Research and Development Group um, team, will be here at the venue, so please come chat with us. Or if you have time and take a look at our code, please open up issues or the, um, start discussing with us. Thank you very much. Thank you, Yuriko. Do we have any questions from the audience? Don't be shy, raise your hand. The gentleman at the back. What do you think about optimistic rollup and constructions like um, that? Sorry, can you raise your voice, please? What do, What do you think about optimistic rollup and constructions like that? Sorry, we we cannot uh, really I hear I you. I can oh. hear him. Okay. What did I think? What do I think about optimistic rollup? Yes. <laughs> we have to research more. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it's a okay. So it's a. It's a great invention, but we just want to focus. Uh, I think we should have we should allocate all the um, resources of the research into like different branches, and then Plasma Group can focus on optimistic rollup, and then we want to focus on Plasma so that we can separate our works to be more efficient. So I'm really interested in the technique personally, but as a company. I think our, we are going to stick with Plasma on the implementation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Do you have any more questions from the audience? OK, and you can find our uh, sharing on the, our Telegram group chat. We have a lot of uh, articles up there. And if you have any questions, please feel free to ask there. And if you have any questions about Plasma, and if you, please come and talk to Yuriko, and she'll be here till the end of this event. OK, thanks again for your sharing. Thank you so much. And now we are going to take.